What's up guys and welcome back for another EVE Online solo mining episode, episode 86. I am out here again in a venture, but this time we're in a alpha uh, tune here. I've really actually enjoyed doing uh, venture mining and even playing around with my alpha tune. Um, this is literally an account that I purposely do not Omega just so that um, I can kind of do that whole alpha thing, which is really nice. We're out here getting Scordite and Veldspar. Um, now, we're in a starter system. Starter systems are really great. I want to cover those a little bit in this episode. Starter systems are amazing. If you started a mining recently and you're in those systems where they kind of plop you after you make your character, don't be in a hurry to move out of those systems. They're, they're really great. There's a lot of people in those systems, usually like 30 or 40 plus. You'll get a lot of spam. You'll get people blanket uh, emailing um, all of local or uh, blanket inviting to corp all of local um, I usually just block those invites and everything but the security status of the system is one which means that there'll be no rats you won't have any rats to pop on grid which um, which quite interestingly enough if you even if you're into like porpoise mining or um, any drone mining or anything like that where you find it annoying to pull in mining drones and uh, just to get rid of the annoying rats, uh, doing these high security systems, these really high, high security systems uh, where there's no rats is really nice because your your downtime is, is minimalized because of you don't have to worry about those swaps and everything. So this is a pretty basic venture fit, and I'll put that in the description. But the, um, the main topic I want to talk about in this episode is and this is uh, based on a couple of questions I've seen over the past few days or so. We're going to talk about in avoiding gankers as a miner. And then we're also going to talk about moon mining. You know, how you would do it solo um, and kind of what all that is. Now, my definition of solo, and, in, and this kind of encompasses the entire series here, is I believe, and my definition of solo is solo heartbeat. What that means is, I'm the only, no matter how many accounts I have, I'm still only one person, two hands, one heartbeat. Um, there's no other person, living person, you know, helping fill my coffers. So, unlike other MMOs where you can get away with, like, not being in a guild or not being in a community, Eve, unfortunately, for most, for a lot of things, does require corporations or alliances, but by my definition of solo, you will still be playing solo. Um, even when I was very, very deep into the whole community, uh, corporation, alliance kind of structure, my 90% of the time, if I wasn't just going out and doing um, war fleets or just PvP in general, even some mining is still very much solo. Um, you're responsible for your own yield and everything. So that kind of leads me into like the solo moon mining thing. Moon mining is amazing and high sec moon mining can be very, very profitable, but you kind of need a corporation to facilitate that. And the reason is, and I have done in the past, um, my own Athenor with the moon drill, I've done my own moon pools and everything, but I do not recommend that as a solo player. There are corporations, there are alliances in high sec and they dedicate a hundred percent of their time to hunting um, low population corporations that have structures and they'll either just outright destroy the structure or they'll um, they'll basically extort you for ISK on a monthly basis or on a one-time basis get a bunch of ISK out of you probably a few billion and then probably still put your structure into uh, reinforcement and destroy it so it's really not worth it unless you have a corporation that's big enough to kind of respond to a timer respond to somebody attacking your structure then um, it's most likely not going to be worth it and that's kind of where if you want to do moon mining in high sec you either have to work with a corporation um, or be in a corporation that does that kind of thing and you'll still be doing a lot of your stuff solo but it is possible but doing it strictly solo as a single player even with a couple of accounts is not really feasible now if I was gonna do I haven't really done a whole lot of moon mining um, in high sec because of just I, I have my time is I have so much time I've spent on doing it like almost everything else 
if I was going to do moon mining, my recommended setup would probably be an Orca with like um, one or two Hulks or Mackinaws. The reason is because you want to compress that moon ore, move, be able to move it around. A lot of reactions, reactions require moon goo. And moving the moon goo or the compressed moon ore around um, to sell it to whoever. Um, and also, compressed moon ore is, is a pretty high commodity. A lot of the moon ore that gets mined in Nullsec doesn't really leave the region. It gets sold as goo or compressed locally to people who are doing reactions. But there are regions of Nullsec that are importing moon, goo, or moon ore to uh, do those reactions themselves. So for me, I'd probably do like an Orca and then like a couple of Hulks. I would compress all that moon and I'd probably uh, get it to Jita and where I would actually just contract it, put it on contract um, if I don't have a buyer set up already for people who are looking for that kind of stuff to kind of ship out um, ship out to uh, to Nullsec. You don't have to necessarily go straight into Jita to sell that stuff either. You can kind of do your local market. Um, and when you start having a good stockpile of that compressed moon ore, then people will, you know, start to realize that there's a certain system and a certain market that has all your moon goo in it and they'll kind of bookmark it and you'll you'll have some returning customers and stuff like that it, and it also really depends on where people are jumping stuff out from a lot of jump freighters are coming out of nullsec straight to jita and then they're undocking jita with their career contracts and jumping straight back out so your your customer base is going to be a lot bigger if you do get that moon ore over to jita but Another thing too is if you're in a corporation that's doing moon mining, they're going to expect a little bit of uh, something <clears throat> to uh, to facilitate the cost of the uh, Athnor, the cost of the of uh, the whole process, right? And that can either be um, participating in their buyback um, program, um, or they'll take a percentage of the moon goo, or whatever the case may be. But all in all, moon moon mining is is very much. Uh, very much a, a, a good thing to do and if you go out to null where a lot of moon mining happens that's where a lot of uh, money is to be made as well i would say moon mining um uh, merc mining and then also ice mining and stuff like that but that's kind of my thought it's kind of a long um, answer to that question but that's my kind of stance on high sec uh moon mining now to answer the other question, uh, this one came from uh, we're talking about ganking. How do you avoid suicide gankers in high sec? You could do a lot actually to avoid them. Um, and the way I have successfully kind of like steered away from being ganked or whatever is just kind of being paranoid um, and just not really um, taking chances with anything. Uh, generally speaking, I try to mine in systems that have five or less people in local. Uh, and that's including me that allows me to look info on people that are in local with me if I see negative security on Players that means they've been doing PvP. So um, You got to be kind of weary of that and in most cases suicide gankers will have a recon alt who will be flying around in a covert ops cloak They'll warp like a hundred K off from a belt if they see you you won't see them ever but when they see you they'll bookmark a rock that's close to where you're operating and then in two minutes when that shared bookmark is available to all of their alts, they'll jump in system and then basically warp directly on top of you. So the way you can avoid getting ganked there um, is once you see that local spike, if once you see four or five or whatever, um, people could just automatically just come into local all at once. Um, I just take a break, you know, go empty everything in my uh, headquarters um, wait for you know local to re return to what it was before that and uh, then when I go back out maybe like a 45 minutes to an hour then I'll go to a different belt also if I see anything that's not a mining ship that comes onto the the grid there are a lot of people that go around to the mining uh, the asteroid belts who are just looking for belt rats there will be flying cruisers or frigates or sometimes even battleships I've seen um, Battleships going for belt rats it seems a little crazy to me. But anytime I see anything that's not a mining ship come on to the asteroid belt, I naturally assume they're scouting. And so I usually um just change belts at that point. And if it continue if I continue to see that same person kinda of going around to each belt, um and then I'll kinda of watch them if and that's another good reason to like leave uh, rats up 
leave those um, frigate rats in high sec up on the belt. So if that battleship, that cruiser who you've seen going onto these belts um, comes to where you're at, if they go in to attack those rats, you could pretty much you can pretty much determine that they're after just belt rats or cans or whatever the case may be. Also, if you see people coming local that have um, that have suspect timers, now suspect timers can mean a lot of things. It can mean like they've um, salvaged wrecks that weren't theirs, or they've can flipped, or whatever the case may be. It doesn't necessarily mean they're gankers. I'm still very weary of those people. Um, I'm still, you know, usually changing belts if they're kind of hanging around or whatever. The other thing you can do too is known aggressors. You should have them saved as um, negative standing contacts. So that's your safeties, uh, the safety net. That's your code people. So anytime anybody that's associated with safety or code comes in the system, you can see that nice little red box with the minus sign next to their name, so you know that that is a known aggressor and things like that. Also, if you do get ganked. Um, from somebody, go to that kill mail and that player, give them a negative standing on contact, give their corporation a negative standing on contact. And if it does happen a lot, if you do end up getting ganked a lot, you're gonna at least you're gonna be building up um, some sort of a dossier of people who are in your area who are after miners. So you can see before you even undock who's in local, but also just look at those uh, security statuses. In most cases, um, Suicide gankers will have a negative security status, uh, especially if they're running with multiple um, coursers or multiple uh, catalyst alts. They usually won't reset them back to, they usually won't, you know, rotate new uh, characters just to wipe the security status. So in most cases, you're going to see some sort of a negative security there, which is a good indicator. Another thing you can do too is go to like Z kill board, um, look at the systems that you're operating in, look at um, kills that are happening um, against miners see how frequently they're happening see what time of day they're happening and then you can just kind of opposite that I like I said I usually don't mine in systems that that don't have that have more than five people in them that just makes it to where if somebody comes in local I can see it very easily I can kind of keep tabs on everybody that's you know and that's operating there and a lot of systems who have people living full-time in those systems will be in one time zone or another so that's another i've talked about it before like casing a system before you even like set up full operations figure out when the peak time is when the off time is and and you can slot yourself in there and everything keep descanning um you know if you're sieging with like a porpoise or an orca just uh, make sure that you and especially if you're sieging with a porpoise and orca uh, make sure you're doing all of these things to uh, give yourself as much information as possible. Know what's happening in systems next to you um, and things like that. So hopefully that answers all those questions. It's a very broad subject. Avoiding ganking is very difficult. I've, I've managed to do it just because I'm kind of paranoid and everything. And I'm kind of looking at everything as, you know, I'm looking at every situation um, as a possible way for me to get ganked. So it helps me kind of get away from all that stuff and everything. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, I'm making these videos shorter now because I'm trying to pack as much uh, information into these as possible. I don't want them to go 30 minutes to an hour if they don't need to. So that's really kind of like my goal now is 10 or 8 to 10 minutes on these and just be uh, succinct and as jam-packed as information as I can possibly do. But thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.